In this video, we'll talk about the Triponema pallidum. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one. Stay tuned till the end. Triponema pallidum is the key causative bacteria for the sexually transmitted disease syphilis. So when we talk about the microbiology behind this, Triponema pallidum belongs to spirochetes. These are helically coiled corkscrew shaped bacteria and they are generally gram negative in nature. They contain distinct diderm that means double membrane and they are roughly 3 to 500 micron long. One of the peculiar feature about the spirochetes that they have endoflagella. Endoflagella is one of the system which one of the flagellar system which runs between these two double membranes. This is very different from any other bacteria. Flagella is generally protruded out of the bacterial surface. But this particular endoflagella moves within the membranes. This allows this bacteria to make a corkscrew like movement. Now let's talk about why Triponema is so important because this is the causative agent for the disease syphilis. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease. Obviously, it's a bacterial infection. And the key causative agent for this is Triponema pallidum. That is why it is very important from a pathological point of view. The Triponema pallidum bacteria can make its way through the thick mucus via twisting like motions and the endoflagella helps in this process. Generally they are acquired by direct contact during let's say sexual activity. They can enter the host via any kind of bridge in the squamous or in the columnar epithelium. So let's say there is a small bridge in your skin and there is a contact with the fluid that contains triponema, it can enter your body. Now let's quickly try to breeze through the stages of syphilis. Syphilis is kind of like a deadly sexually transmitted disease. So it begins with the primary stage which happens within the 3 to 90 days after infection. Then there is a secondary stage generally lasts for 4 to 10 weeks after infection. Then there would be a latent stage where things are completely okay and there is no problem. And there is a tertiary stage which is like 3 to 15 years after infection. So in tertiary stages, there are a lot of problems, organ failures and multi-organ uh, kind of infection happens. Now let's talk about the phases one by one. In the primary phase of the syphilis, there are rashes and scars present on the external genitalia and many other places. So these sores are actually known as chancre. So if we zoom into one chancre, we can see it has a raised border, hard base and a fluid filled region and this fluid filled region is enriched in the Triponema bacteria. So by mistake let's say somebody touches the uh, particular region so that would basically take the bacteria with it. Now these rashes are present in genitals, anus or even around the mouth. Let's say during a sexual activity somebody touches the penis with a chancre and the Triponema bacteria would eventually try to invade its way through any skin breaches or also during oral sex or many other kind of sexual activity this can be transmitted. So Triponema can bore through the membranes, uh, th the mucus and eventually look for the breaches in the membrane or in the epithelial tissue. One thing to be noted that the Triponema can be transmitted from mother to baby during the birth. And in babies, there are different kind of uh, symptoms like maculopapular rash, there are hearing defects, there are neuritis and many other kind of uh, small morphological features that can lead to complications in later life. Now let's talk about the secondary stage of syphilis. In this case, there are many type of rashes developed throughout the body. There are also fever, swollen lymph node and many rashes which are appears different regions of the body and these rashes are uh, distinct. We'll talk about it in, in some time. So generally at this point of time, the triponema moves to the lymph node and that causes swelling of the lymph node which is known as lymph adenopathy. Eventually triponema can also reach the bloodstream and cause a systemic level response. Anyway, um, sometimes what happens is syphilis infection is also transmitted during blood transfusion. 
and in that cases things are non canonical shankar doesn't develop in that case okay let's see what happens during the secondary stage so obviously we talked about the lymph adenopathy or the swollen lymph node but alongside that syphilis can eventually move to the blood stream and they can also basically uh, cause this kind of itchy and ma maculopapular rash so there are different kind of rash some are pustular which are filled with pus there are some which are papillosquamous which are scaly hard rashes on the skin there are also condyloma which are white small bumps on the skin so these are different type of rashes which one can find in a patient with syphilis and this is some somewhere around 6 to 12 weeks from infection now this particular stage is very very infectious then there would be a time when the infection is latent and there is no signs and symptoms so it's kind of like they remain in circulation but they don't show any kind of pathological symptoms people think that okay the uh, infection is kind of resolved but that's the biggest mistake during the treatment so basically this is a latent stage not a cured stage now their presence can lead to t cell mediated type 4 hypersensitivity and that might lead to secretion of several interleukins like interleukin 1 tnf alpha so it might lead to macrophage uh, activation as well which sometimes might lead to redness fever or warmth but nothing major happening at that particular stage but later on one can see guma formation on the skin now guma is basically a mass of dead swollen fiber like tissue which has different type of uh, immune cells and fibroblasts together so this kind of uh, guma also has a necrotic center center in, in it the tertiary stage of syphilis is very difficult in this case guma develops in different regions for example it can develop on liver it can also lead to cardiovascular lesions it can also cause neurological complications so the last stage or tertiary stage is pretty difficult and the survival chances are low in this stage now let's talk about the diagnosis of treponema pallidum it cannot be gram stained so it doesn't stain well with gram, gram staining methods though it's a gram negative bacteria but anyway a silver nitrate stain is better in an otherwise yellowish background they appears black in this particular stain now treponema pallidum can be detected in a more deterministic way with the help of particle agglutination test or tppa in this case avine rbc which is coated with treponema pallidum antigens are uh, actually added in a microtiter plate eventually patient serum would be loaded on these microtiter plate patient serum might have a bacteria against the uh, 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 antigen against the treponema uh, pallidum so let's say the treponema has invaded the patient so there would be antibody generation because the antigen is there in the uh, patient's blood these antibody are the key thing that we try to detect in this test either the patient has antibody or they might not have antibody so that is why this particular test is very sensitive so different titers are tested uh, in this case you can see an example of positive versus negative uh, titer in this case there are other kind of test which uses fluorescence treponema antibody uh, test basically it has a antibody which can detect treponema specific antigens and has fluorescence attached to it so it's a fluorescent level detection uh, which is kind of like also supportive along with the TPPA test so the most uh, used test for treponema pallidum detection is TPPA test now let's talk about the treatment options for treponema pallidum there are plenty treatment options since it's a bacterial disease it can be treated with antibiotic anybody can understand that penicillin G is the drug of choice also erythromycin or tetracycline can be used but has to be monitored with the help of a physician so that's why always visiting a doctor at the early stage increases your chance of curing because if the infection is at tertiary stage then there are a lot of complications that has to be managed properly that is why detection of this disease and without hesitating 
one should visit the doctor and try to initiate the treatment as soon as possible. That increases the chance of perfect healing. So I hope this video was useful. If you like to get more notes and flashcards, visit our Facebook page. All the links are provided in the description. You can also visit our Instagram page for all the flashcards. Then see you in next video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and share with your friends. Tell them about this channel. Thank you.